Who is Jesus, therefore? Well, Jesus is one of the great masters of the inner life, just as was the Buddha and other great mystics in the various religions of the world. There is no single person by whom men must come to God. Instead, the mystical path in each religion has its own validity and can lead to an experience of union with ultimate reality. This is even true for Buddhism, which does not even profess to believe in God. According to contemplatives, it was the great religious insight of Jesus of Nazareth to recognize that our relationship to the ground of being is analogous to the relationship between a father and a son. I hope you can hear the heresy in that idea. Let me read you the words of a man who moves in evangelical circles. He is unmistakably influenced by contemplative spirituality, and he teaches contemplative or centering prayer to evangelical audiences. I am quoting from one of his better-known books. Quote, The difference between faith as belief in something that may or may not exist and faith as trusting God is enormous. The first is a matter of the head, the second a matter of the heart. The first can leave us unchanged, the second intrinsically brings change. I pause in the quotation for a moment to point this out. This is pretty standard stuff in many evangelical circles. Uh, This particular writer would not have enjoyed the paper I'm reading this morning. But I continue to quote him. Quote, Such is the faith described by Paul Tillich in his famous work, Shaking the Foundations. Now he quotes Tillich. Quote, Grace strikes us when we are in great pain and restlessness. It strikes us when we walk through the dark valley of a meaningless and empty life. It strikes us when year after year the longed-for perfection does not appear, when the old compulsions reign within us as they have for decades, when despair destroys all joy and courage. Sometimes at that moment a wave of light breaks into our darkness, and it is as though a voice were saying, you are accepted. You are accepted. Accepted by that which is greater than you, and the name of which you do not know. Do not ask for the name now. Perhaps you will find it later. Do not try to do anything now. Perhaps later you will do much. Do not seek for anything, do not perform anything, do not intend anything. Simply accept the fact that you are accepted. If that happens to us, we experience grace. End of the quotation by Tillich. Now the writer who is quoting him goes on to apply him in the following paragraph. This writer says, you may be insecure, inadequate, mistaken, or pot-bellied. Death, panic, depression, and disillusionment may be near you. But you are not just that. You are accepted. Never confuse your perception of yourself with the mystery that you really are accepted. End of quote. What do we have here? The gospel? Far from it. Instead, our author speaks of an acceptance that already belongs to everyone and which can be believed in quite apart from any name, human or divine and obviously quite apart from the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In case you are wondering, (laughs) the words I have read to you, which include the quotations from Tillich, are found in a popular book written by Brennan Manning and called The Ragamuffin Gospel, published by Multnomah Books, 1990. It is characteristic of the contemplative spirituality movement that it rejects religious exclusivism. It is arrogant, the movement believes, to claim that we and we alone possess the truth. To these mystics, the belief that the historical person of Jesus is the one and only way to God is a narrow and prejudiced point of view. That view, they say, is a relic of the rationalistic kind of religion that arose in Western culture and reflected the ethos of the modern worldview. But 
Modernity has been succeeded by postmodernism. As postmodern people, therefore, they say, we must be open to the ancient mystical insights of all the world's great religions. As John Caddock will no doubt emphasize for you, this form of mystical religion is extremely widespread and is pouring forth a gusher of literature. One of the numerous spokespersons for the movement is Elizabeth A. Johnson, who serves as Distinguished Professor of Theology at Fordham University in New York. Fordham itself is a hotbed for this system of thought. Johnson writes this, quote, But the ancient path of contemplation, which is becoming one of the great religious movements of our times, draws persons into the purifying darkness of an apophatic moment that breaks the all divine images open. As a result of this existentially difficult and religiously profound not knowing, Persons are moved experientially into the vision of the incomprehensible mystery of God. End of quote. About the only thing I can agree with in Johnson's statement is that contemplative spirituality is indeed becoming one of the great religious movements of our times. It is, in fact, the ultimate experiential religion in which people from all religions can participate on an equal footing. It has no room for the exclusivism of the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. It is, therefore, a contemporary expression of the spirit of Antichrist. And if our Lord does not tarry much longer, this mystical movement could well provide the platform for the universal religion of the beast and the false prophet. Conclusion. There is no question in my mind that God has raised up the great movement and is using it widely. On the other hand, we live in a very confused world. And our world is headed for even greater confusion as the end of the age approaches. We ought, therefore, to feel a new sense of urgency to keep the scriptures as our guide to navigate through the shadows and twilight that are rapidly gathering. In addition to the old forms of confusion about the gospel, we must also face the rise of new forms of error like contemplative spirituality. I am reminded of the solemn words of Jesus as he spoke about the end of the age. His warning was grim. He said, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Matthew 24, 24. Unless the grace movement holds firmly to the uniqueness of the biblical gospel and to the indispensability of the name of Jesus for salvation, it cannot hope to accomplish what it ought to accomplish for God. Indeed, if it does not do these things, it may be buried under an ocean of false theology. It may be washed away by the experience-based religion that is all too rapidly rising to prominence as our world hurdles toward divine judgment. So what's my final word today? Here it is. Stay awake. It's later than you think. All right. I'm uh, supposed to open it now, I think, for questions. <laughs>